Okay, guys, what's up? We're going to shoot this episode standing up because, to be quite honest, this room is an absolute mess. You do not want this camera to look down. Um, but I wanted to just do a brief video talking about the situation with Bats and Kristen Gray. Um, I'm just going to reflect on it for a little bit um, on some things I was thinking through. This is not in order. This isn't as prepared as I did with the TJ Carroll um, situation with... Caleb Gordon and all that jazz. I'm just kind of free flowing to get some content out to you guys because I was thinking about this. I just didn't have time to prepare. So I just jotted some quick notes. So it's not going to be sequential or anything. It's just going to kind of be like some things that I thought about it. For those of you who don't know, uh, my boy Bats, um, young up and coming guy in the Christian hip hop space, uh, probably beyond that at this point, uh, made a comment that he wonders why all of the OG CHH heads kind of take a crap on uh, CHH after they've had some spotlight or a little bit of success or had their run. When they go to move on to other, um, they're quick to kind of bash CHH. To which Kristen Gray came in and said that CHH has been dead for the last decade. Okay, now that that's all on the, on the timeline, we know a lot of people had a lot of stuff to say, some OGs, mostly young cats. This conversation is dense and I want to spend um, a significant amount of time on it on a later video when I've thought out some well-prepared things because sim similar to the Caleb situation, I sit in the middle of the new cats and the OGs, okay? I'll be 34 in February, but it's really not about age as much as it is timeline as far as the wave and the eras of a certain batch of CHH artists. And so I have a unique perspective where I know a lot of the history. I know a lot of the people involved in a lot of the foundations of where this thing started and how it's evolved. But then I also am an engineer in the background. So I mix a lot of the artists that you see in today's current young CHH space. Not just young guys, I mix some OGs as well, but mostly young guys. And so I'm around these guys and I see what they talk about. I hear the music that they make and I see their concerns as both believers and art makers. And so I'm in the middle of this because I wasn't there when it started. I came in right after your so-called 116 movement. I didn't even know CHH existed until I was in college and I had been a Christian well before that. And so looking back and studying it, I had mostly a secular perspective because that's all I heard up until that point. Um, and so I had to do a lot of research, a lot of digging and meeting people in the last 20 years of making music. I've learned a lot about the space, but I also um, have interacted with so many young people because I'm still around. I've been here for an almost 20 year span, which most people can't say. Um, even a lot of the OGs, and we'll talk about it at the end of this video, though they've been alive and were a part of CHH at one point of time in the timeline, they either came in, came out, came in, came out, or came in, had a big run for a short period of time, and then left, and or they had a good run, got out and then came, just recently came back in to kind of revitalize and they call that a, a massive year run, which to me is, is super cap, but we'll talk about that later. So now let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's break down some things. I've got them written down here. A lot of OGs have church hurt. Christians have church hurt. It's, it's commonplace that Christians would offend other Christians. We're broken. We're redeemed in Christ's work on the cross. We're being transformed into the image of God. And so Christians functioning in the CHH space or, um, yeah, Christians, I was going to say CHH people, but Christians functioning in the art space and in the business space are bound to sin. And there's bound to be traditions of sin in certain regards that lead to church hurt, especially when you look at a lot of the assumptions that come with being a Christian and what type of music we're supposed to listen to and all this. When the urban scene comes through, that can be hard to unpack because there's a lot of negative connotation to the hip hop space. And there's a lot of lack of knowledge when it comes to business. And there were a lot of pillars and platforms and conventional means in which you had to go through as an artist back in the days. So yes, there is a lot of church hurt. And then you mix the fact that we're, we're, we have theology, we have things we know about God, and we have things that we look at that we say that is not of God, and that is of God. And in the midst of our brokenness, we can tangle a lot of 
good intentions, pride, anger, selfishness, religiosity, and it can create a big spaghetti of things that lead to church hurt. I've met a lot of OGs that have church hurt. And I can say that some people deal with that in different ways. Some guys will literally project that hurt onto other believers. And in this case, in the CHH space, whenever they talk about CHH, they've got a lot of projection of the hurts that they went through to where they've taken it to the point to overly criticize and assume things about the community now or what it's become. Some people bottle it in for a long time and they just never discuss it. They just kind of say, you know what? I'm out. Take me out the game, coach. I'm done. Now, what we see here is someone, Chris on Gray, here's the thing. Um, and we're not going to go into what he's about because it's not relevant here. I, you know, uh, the crew gave him his flowers and all that. And, you know, that's cute. We appreciate it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I get the balance there that they're trying to have to the show. But to me, that type of stuff is irrelevant to the conversation. I think they were trying to establish his credibility to be able to speak. But um, I, I think that's irrelevant here when you look at what he actually said. Um, it, it, it was completely out of pocket. Um, but we'll get to that later. Again, OGs experience church hurt and they project, they make assumptions, and they also are toxic. I think this was a case of toxicity because there was a lack of relevance, a lack of unpacking, a lack of context. If you're an OG, let's not even talk about music. If you're an OG, wisdom just, you would imagine that they would just unpack something. I hate this one line era, by the way. I hate the tweet, I hate the Instagram caption, because people try to say one-liners that are seemingly super profound, but because they didn't explain it, it can have a million different definitions, it leaves you out in the field going, what the heck did he mean? And in this case, since it was seemingly negative, it's just toxicity, it's just sprinkling salt all over the place. So... You know, that was whack to me. You know, if you're an OG, handle yourself with some class. If you're going to say something as um, stabbing-like as CHH has been dead for 10 years, could you please unpack that? Because a part of that 10 years, you were a part of doing successfully well in this space. And so that is a contradiction to your own life. But then also, it was so left field to the context, in my opinion, that it was just whack all around whack, but that's okay. Church hurt, Com CHH hurt being projected on a young guy. That's just facts, especially if you don't unpack it. It's even more projection, but let's move on. I have a problem with the fact that OGs, they love to project and not caution. There's nothing wrong with saying this is what I experienced and I want to warn you from walking into this trap or thinking with this mindset or expecting these things. That's okay. But don't say, well, this is how it's going to be. This is how it is. This is why you think such and such. You don't know. You really don't know. Why would you project in such a unique space? Why would you project your own personal experience as some type of, I don't care how much of it you saw either. You could have been in the CHH space and seen time and time and time and time again a certain behavior and it still doesn't give you the right to make the assumption that every other scenario that's similar in that space is gonna transpire exactly how you saw it happen to others and how it happened to you. Extremely immature in my opinion. And you can tell the spirit behind what people say sometimes. You can tell if they're just coming from a place of either genuine hurt or genuine concern or anger and frustration or spite. And this was clearly that. However, back to my point. Oh, geez, could you please give us warnings and cautions and share your life experiences without projecting assumptions that that uh, you know, and lording and making certain declarations that are just left field without unpacking them, especially when you're not involved in the community and then you just interject years later or, or you're just not active in the community. When you do that, it looks really distasteful. Um, let's see. Uh, we are in the Twitter age. They didn't have the ability to vent as hard. Okay. Here's another aspect. Back in the day, OGs did not have Twitter. 
MySpace may be maximum, but that was not a place where you made short videos. YouTube was just getting popping. It wasn't a place you saw a bunch of artists venting. So we're in the social media age where when you want to express something or you want to go to the general public and bring something to people's attention, you can. In fact, that's how we all communicate now. Back in the day, OGs couldn't do that. They had local circles, smaller groups of people, small circles. You know what I'm saying? Like if they wanted to express something, a lot of times they probably had to hide it because unless they had people they trusted, it was all going to be more in-house than now. We're in the social media age where you can be connected to a lot of different churches or a lot of different believers from a lot of different belief systems, etc. And so there's just a much more of a diversity and the therapy aspect of it is that a lot of people can vent when they have questions and things going on in their heart that they're wrestling with. A lot of these Christians, when you listen to their testimonies, this is the OGs I'm talking about, they talk about having to bottle in a lot of stuff and seeing stuff happen behind closed doors and not really feeling like they could say something because it could jeopardize their career or their circumstance. And so I think a lot of OGs are coming out of the woodworks right now to talk because they're like, man, I've had this bottled up in my chest forever and I want to just say stuff. I want to express myself. Well, and sometimes it happens in a toxic way like this one. Um, it wasn't as easy to have a career elsewhere, elsewhere so maybe they were quieter. Right. You know, if you could jeopardize your career speaking out back in the days because um, there were conventional means of there were certain ways that you had to go about getting your music heard or being a part of a certain talent pool to get shows and things like that. So you were less likely to be outspoken about a lot of the things on your heart. So we're hearing the the excess dump of stuff OGs have been bottling in for a long time. Um, and that's not to say they didn't talk about it, just to say that now we're in an age where you can kind of let that stuff fly with almost no accountability now. Think about what a comment like this could do to a younger man trying to glorify God. That's a great point here. Kristen, Kristan, however you say your name, how do you think a believer who's trying to glorify God, make excellent art, contribute to the community? I don't care if you're involved in it or not. What do you think your words do to a young man who was where you once sat? What were you what were you expecting to yield from that? What kind of fruit were you looking to produce in saying what you said? I'm just I'm I'm really genuinely just curious because me looking at that as someone who's a lot older than these young guys, I look at that and I say, gosh, you know, bats it has a huge support system. So it's not as detrimental to a guy like him, in my opinion, because he's probably got dudes calling him up like, yo, yo, dust your shoulders off. It ain't even worth, it ain't even worth, you know, poking the bear. Like you're relevant right now in this space. He's not, you, you do successful without people like that and comments like that, that are just ambiguous. Go do your thing. He's an old head. He's sour, whatever. But Imagine somebody who might not have as good of a support system or really looked up to you during that time. And now he's hearing a guy that he looks up to as an influence kind of down talk the space so um, drastically, like just so toxic, so heavily, so harshly uh, in a one liner, not even unpacking it. Does that encourage what they're grabbing the baton to do? My assumption is that you wouldn't even care about something like that. But nonetheless, like, man, we really need to be careful for, you know, watch over our words, man. They really do impact people. And if we're going to say something harsh, can we be ready to unpack that and also to say that in the most respectful way possible? Anyway, let's move on. Um, I think there's a serious immaturity when people try to take something like Twitter or Instagram or a story or a 30 second or 15 second video and try to say a, a deep one liner that's provocative, knowing they're on a platform where they can't unpack it and then also go the step further and never unpack it. That is so immature and I'm so sick of it. Why, guys, do we feel like we need to try and be profound with a one liner to be provocative and then not be ready to give an account for it so that we can yield some fruit out of it? That is just super whack. Um, you know, Chris on Gray sounded like a troll here. Like he didn't even sound like a man of respect and honor that 
people would categorize him as as far as his success in this space. So that was just corny. It was, it was you could tell OGs who interacted with that post, you could see how they felt about what he did there. It, it was super troll. Um, also, and, and lastly, we'll just close off with, with this, man. I'm sick of OGs who say, man, I gave 20 years to this game. Man, I've been in here for a decade. And then you look at their catalog of work. Now, we're not talking about Kriston Gray here, but it made me think, like, because, you know, I came into CHH even knowing about it roughly when the We Live as Kings album dropped, you know, a couple years before that. So I'm looking at Kriston Gray and I'm like, yeah, he's released some solo albums and then a, a collective album, you know, pity me for not really, maybe I'm not up on game on bro, but I'm like, do you even have 10 years of contribution to this space? Like, I'm sure he was a part of this space for 10 years and in the community and everything like that. But, you know, it's like when I look at, not Jay-Z, but like someone in the secular, secular space who's been like, I've been in the game 40 years, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, bro, you have three albums out. Like, you might have five. Lil Wayne is someone who could say, yo, I've been in the game 30 years. Because if you look at his discography, he has over 100 albums of work released and his contribution to the culture just is beyond his years. He's someone we would respect as far as hearing some feedback and criticism about the community. I'm sitting there thinking, was Chris on great? Does he even have 10 years of work contributed to the space to even be a respectable opinion in this space? I was just curious, somebody enlighten me if, if I'm just not up on game, but I'm like, I only remember bro being a part of like a couple of projects and I maybe seen him do a five year span or something, but he was even in and out on that. And it's not like dude is dropping every year. So I'm like, do we even respect bro's opinion, especially in the nature that he gave it? Like, so anyway, um, it's just, you see where OGs are currently in this space, right? They're in a tough spot because it's like, do I move on from the culture and transform and become something else and contribute in a different way? I find myself in a similar situation where I have a son, I have a wife, I have a life, I'm in, I'm in transition mode, you know, I'm buying a house and things like that. And I want to focus on the, the things that I want to do but I just feel overwhelmed by the deep sense of responsibility for contributing to young believers trying to figure out their art making and their faith journey in the midst of that because it, it can be a hard thing to juggle. It can be a hard thing to prioritize the right things. It can be a hard thing to grow with a sense of balance in each area. Um, and so I'm always pulled back. That's why I even got into the engineering space because I'm like, yo, I want to be a part of improving the sound quality. I feel like for the majority speaking, a lot of CHH is super low quality. And so I wanted to go into it and say, let me contribute to the space by educating people on art making and the creative process and engineering so that we can just up the caliber of music because I always felt like CHH was so behind in a lot of ways, not just sonically. Um, and so that was my tug. And I think it, uh, a lot of OGs older than me and around the same age as me struggle with that same thing. Do I focus on myself or do I give back? And they're torn. And some people kind of turn their back and say, you know what? I had my time. It's over. It's not even a, a malice thing. It just is what it is. Fix the camera. Um, and then some people actually do come back and contribute and say, I want to pour into the younger generation or I wanna contribute some more to the space. You know what I'm saying? Like, shout outs to guys like Thizzle, shout outs to the ambassadors, shout outs to Ruslan. You know, there's a lot of guys out there contributing to the space that really care. And we need that, bro. We need to hear these stories. Um, I was just talking to an OG uh, a couple weeks ago and I was just like, bro, people need to hear your story, man. Like, they, they need to just hear these stories to see it ain't all what we assumed it to be. And like, we want to take the baton. A lot of y'all are, are trying to caution us not to take the b baton because it's a lost cause. I even seen um, Derek Miner, I'm not going to go into it in detail, but he was cautioning dudes to not be bringing up old conversations and things like that. And, and, and I, I could understand a lot of what bro was saying, but I heard some projection in a sense in the attitude behind that as well. And I was just like, 
man, it doesn't mean it's going to play out how you said it was going to play out. Like, dudes care about how God is represented, how their walk is, how good the art is. Uh, the quarrels that we have, a lot of them aren't just for quarrel's sake. Like, we should be able to talk about the things of God and the art making and politic. And just because a lot of people have done that stuff bad doesn't mean we're going to. In fact, why don't you just boss us up on games so we can do it better? So we can do it right. So we can yield this fruit. We out here trying to get this fruit. So anyway, those are a couple of my thoughts. I know it was out of sequence and all that, but like we need the OGs, man, straight up. Like God is going to do what he does regardless, but I'm just saying my own sentiment. Like we need the OGs. We need to hear their stories. We need to hear what went wrong and what we could, what we need to think about and how we need to navigate. And, and y'all need us. Y'all need the young, I'm not entirely young blood. Like I said, I'm right in the middle, but like y'all need us too. Y'all need that young energy. Y'all need that, that zeal for God back in the space. Y'all need that variety of music because back in the days, there weren't a lot of varieties of hip hop to choose from. Now it's just hip hop is growing and we bring a lot of that to the table. Uh, mixing and engineering has evolved. We make higher, we make more of a quantity of music than y'all did. Like we're just in a new era. Like so we, we can learn things from one another and we can grow and we can be in the family of God and, and boost up the space. Most importantly, up our spiritual love for one another and our community and our love for God and how we treat each other and how we grow. We can just elevate that. Um, and we can also heal. You know what I'm saying? There's room to even heal from things you were scarred from, from your past in this space. So hopefully that was encouraging guys. Drop your feedback in the comments below. I'm gonna be chopping up these videos to put shorts on both YouTube and IG. But yo, if y'all have any feedback on this, let me know, I appreciate y'all for rocking with me. It's your boy Conscience. Again, if you want any of my content, go to conscienceshiphop.com. I've been dropping a variety of content for you guys. I'm really kicking it into heavy gear this year and I'm not stopping. So love God, love others, man. Let's learn how to do it better. Peace.